For most people, especially when you're just starting out, GCSE physics is a big challenge. And these are my three things that you need to do differently if you're currently struggling with GCSE physics. These are my top three mistakes that most people make when they're just starting out with GCSE physics. Now, the first one is using equations. I've got a book here that you can buy on Kindle or on iBooks and a paperback coming soon that's going to help you memorize the equations for GCC physics and also use them. Because most people are struggling initially there's because all of these brand new equations and all of this maths that you've got to get used to using. But luckily, once you crack that nut, once you've managed with the equations for GCC physics, then that everything else kind of falls into place. You can do this work on those equations. And why is this book better than just learning with flashcards? Well, because there's a question, easy question, just using the equation as it is. Then there's a rearranging question where you have to actually rearrange the equation you've been given and you need to memorize before you calculate the answer. Then there's a rearranging with a unit conversion. And if you're struggling with a calculation question, it's normally because you don't know how to use the equation and do a calculation, or you don't have to rearrange equations, or you don't know how to convert units. So those three skills Using the equation to do calculation, rearranging and unit conversion are crucial if you're going to do well in GCC physics. Number two is using and interpreting graphs. And in GCC physics, you need to understand some basic things about graphs. This, for example, the straight line through the origin we described as a proportional shape. It means if I double x, I double y. Okay, and lots of the equations actually fall into this kind of shape. Lots of laws fall into this kind of shape. You need to be able to recognize that shape and understand how crucial that is to understand. Now the next one is a curve, and you need to be able to understand and interpret different curves. And that goes back to the gradient. The gradient in physics is the rise divided by the run. So basically how steep is the line, but the gradient can have a number. So expressing that gradient as a number, the rise over the run, is a really important thing. Recognizing what the gradient of the graph shows is a really important thing. Because then you can be also describing how this gradient is changing. This one is steeper at first, and less steep later. But it, but it could easily be a curve which is shallower at first and steeper later. What do those different things show? What does the change in gradient show? Also, let's think about what the area underneath the graph shows. What does the area under the graph represent? Also, you need to be able to do two important things in GCC physics. You need to be able to take a tangent to a curve to get a gradient at a point. That's something that's a skill that's new in these new GCCs, so they're gonna be testing that out in this year's exams. Also, you also need to be able to take data from a graph, maybe making comparisons between two points. And you need to work with a graph to half a small square accuracy. A lot of people that I've been finding have been making mistakes, but they've not been accurate enough with the graph paper that they're given. The third one is really important. It's using exacting language, using precise language. So what do I mean by that? Well, we need precision in our language and physics because we need to be able to work with other people. And we need, when we say something, for them to know exactly what we mean. So you need to learn the words exactly before the explanation. You need to learn not just kind of the rough idea, but you need to learn an exact explanation. I've got an example of that where we need exact wording to convey our meaning accurately. So here's an example that I see quite a lot. So if I have a wave in a slinky, now this is a longitudinal wave, and it is oscillations parallel to the direction of wave transfer. Now a lot of people want to call that a side-to-side -side wave. That's pretty descriptive, I would say. Okay, But there's a problem with that, because this wave here is also a side-to-side -side wave. So if I describe this as a side-to-side -side wave, I haven't distinguished it to this one. Now this is actually a transverse wave, that one I've just shown you, because the oscillations are at right angles to the direction of wave energy transfer, or the direction of the travel of the wave. So in this case, the wave is going up and down, and the oscillations are going side to side. So I can't describe a longitudinal wave as a side-to-side -side wave, because that would mean this was a longitudinal wave, which is clearly not. I hope that helped. This is Gorilla Physics, I'm Kit Masters, and they were your three easy steps to improving your understanding of GCC physics, the three simplest things that you can correct. I've got loads of playlists for GCC physics, including the exam playlists, including all the different topics in your GCC physics. Also a website, gorillaphysics.com, if you want to find all the videos organised by topic. Thanks a lot for watching.